Back in 1990, I was on drugs real bad. I've been staying on the streets for a little while. I decided to go over to a friend of mine's house to get some rest, get some sleep and stuff like that. She said, let me stay. So I asked, can I stay for a couple of days? She said, yeah, you can stay here. So we was all in the room getting high. It was me, the lady that let me stay there, and a couple other guys that was there with it. it was about three or four more guys and like four or five kids in the house. I got tired about 10, 11 o'clock at night. So I asked, can I go stay in one of the rooms and give me some sleep? She said, yeah. I went and checked one of the rooms. All the kids was in one room. So I went over to the other room. Wasn't nobody there. The next morning, I'm seeing a little fire laying next to me. I said, what the hell is going on? When I went to sleep, she wasn't laying in the damn bed. So I walked in the kitchen. I didn't think nothing else about it until I was seeing the little girl went and told her mother that she was hurting downstairs. She didn't do a damn thing about it. All she was doing was worrying about getting the next high. One of the kids came and ran up to me and said, excuse me, I'm raping another little girl. Police came out, took me downstairs, put me in the car. Ambulance came up, checked the little girl, took her to the hospital, found out she was raped. So they, that's what they charged me with, aggravated sexual assault. So I, they locked me up for that. They took me to jail. So I did the DNA test with the police, and they come to find out the girl had syphilis. I never had syphilis a day in my life. First plea was, they gave me 40 with a 20. I turned that down. Then they came back to me again with a 20 with a 10. I turned that down. They came with it back to me again, 10 with a five step. I said no. Took me to court every day for 16 days in the room, which we call it where I was at, we call it bullpen therapy. When you don't see no judge, you just sit in the bullpen. So I got tired of being, going to court for 16 days, every day not seeing a judge. I told him, give me the charge. Let me go and do this time and get it over with. Now I come home, I ain't got to worry about this no more. So when I got out, I had to go down and register as a sex offender. Where I'm at now, I can't do nothing. I can't move where I want to move. I'm tired. I can't, I done got PTSD, and I can't take it no more. I need somebody to help me clear my neck. Dealing with this and dealing with my mom being dead, I can't do it. People know I ain't no rapist, I ain't no killer, I ain't no murderer. I just want to clear my name. Like, be in peace. I'm tired. If I don't get no help, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just tired. I can't do it no more. They tell me I got to be a 1,000 feet from a school zone. I can't go around elementary schools. I can't move around daycare center. got to be a 1,000 feet. Everywhere that I move, I gotta start all over again. And I'm tired, I can't do it no more. There's a lot of restrictions yeah. when you become a, a registered sex offender. Yes. And before this incident with the rape, you had been in trouble with the law before. Yeah, I've been doing it. I do little petty crimes. Right. They need my next eye. So I'm saying you kind of understood that, you know, being arrested is one thing, but being arrested for rape of a five year old child. Yeah, it was something that's, different. That's yeah, serious. That's, that was gonna be something that, uh, was going to be, you know, pretty tough. No. You said that they came at you, they offered you 40 years, then 20 years, then 10 years, and that you had to go to court 16 days in a row and sit in this bullpen section, right? Yeah. And then you said, well, I got tired of it, so I said, let me go ahead and serve this time. Really, like, how big was the convenience sitting in court for 16 straight days to, to making that leap or... I don't want to go to court anymore. Give me the time. I, got, I, I mean, was that kind of a foolish decision? No. To me, I didn't know nothing about it, about the system that you could pick 12, the jury. I didn't know nothing about all that. I was young and didn't know nothing about it, just the system. So I said, well, I'm getting tired of going back to court every day. Wake me up 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, get ready to go to court. Then take me downstairs to the book, down to the cell where they kept. Were you two. still in custody at this point? Yeah. Okay. And they kept taking me to court, taking me downstairs, put me in a, in a cell with all the inmates just to go see a judge. I got tired of going doing all that. So when you finally said, okay, give me this deal or this plea, what did they give you as far as time goes? They gave me um, 10 flat. 10 years? 10, yeah. And how, how, how many years did you serve? Oh, for that, I did six years, four months. For something that you say you didn't do? Yeah. So you get out of prison, 
and you kind of thought, like, no, I could just go on with my life. Yeah, so until I moved to where I'm at now, every time I move, I got to do it all over again and start the whole 10 years for the residency all over again. Now, you, uh, you're married now? Yes. And how long you been with your wife? Well, I've been with my wife 21 years. 21 years. We so, just got married in 2019. Yeah, but you've been with her a long time. Yeah. So when you get out of prison and you meet her, how awkward is to say, yeah, I went to prison for raping a five-year-old? No, when I told her about it, I didn't come right out and tell her. I waited for about a week or two. Yeah. Until we started. Oh, well, yeah, you don't want to say that on your first date. Nah. I waited, waited about a couple weeks. Yeah. I told her about it. She didn't look at me different or nothing. She, because you told her you didn't do it, right? Yeah, I told her that. I didn't do it. How you doing, Blanca? Hi, how are you? Good. Um, you know, you're here today because your husband pled guilty to raping a five-year-old girl. Yes. Yeah. All right, Lamont. You were, uh, you served time for raping a five-year-old girl. You said you're innocent. You took the plea to kind of get over the experience you were going through at the time. You've lived with this for a long time. Because of it, your life is very difficult, you and your wife. And at the very least, you want to clear your name so people at least look at you and say, he didn't do that. <laughs> so you came here, and we gave you a lie detector test. And we asked you, did you at any time bring a five-year-old into your bed for purposes of engaging in sexual acts? No. You answered no. Did you, while that five-year-old was in your bed with you, touch, rub, or fondle that child for sexual purposes? You answered no. no. The results came back the same to each of those questions, and it came back that Lamont told the truth. Ah! Don't. Ah! Oh. 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 It's all right. So it's all right. You, got, you got what you needed. Now we push forward <laughs> from here. You keep on going. I told you, I got your back. I got your back. Give me a kiss. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> this does happen, and I, I, and I realize with doing this show, we see a lot where, uh, you know, innocent people go to jail sometimes. And, uh, you know, the system I sometimes I think is uh, set up to wear you down, where, like it did wear you it down. It did me wear me down. We've been in guard court 16 days in a row. Yeah. Having a public defender, they didn't even know my name. No. Every time they wanted, she wanted to call my name, she had to look down on my, my chart yeah. to call my name. Um, she didn't try to help me. Uh, so I want to read a, a note from the examiner. A score of plus three is required to pass a lie detector test. Lamont scored a plus 26. Ah, ah, uh, ah, see? Off see? the charts, telling the truth. Uh, we're very happy for you. I know. This test brings a sense of relief. Not that you said you had any doubts, but I'm sure there's family members and everybody else that maybe gives them a little side eye. We wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good I was right. My name is Steve Wilkos, and I'm an investigative talk show host with a law enforcement background. It was my life or his. My job is to get truth and justice for everyday people. Watch our videos now.